Sid Vianello, independent analyst and a man who has been closely following the SAB Miller and Hauser Bush in Bev Takeover, joins us on the line for his take on the deal. A very good afternoon is to you, Sid. Did you see this deal going this far? Um, I always said that once the two major shareholders representing 41% of the equity, once they caved in, quite frankly, everybody else would just stand in single file and um, and um, and accept the offer, but you you needed you needed the two major shareholders to come on board. Yeah, I'm not even sure that you needed the management. You you needed the two major shareholders, and and clearly they've they've now struck a deal with the two major shareholders. Um, and um, and um, well, that's the end of the story. So we have a deal, obviously subject to a lot of preconditions. And the, 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 more, the more relevant ones, obviously, being the regulatory authorities in various countries and competition issues and things like that. But, I mean, um, you know, uh, InBev, um, I have no doubt, would have um, done a lot of uh, background work before they, put the, uh, before they even put the tentative offer on the table. And I reckon they, they, must, be pretty, uh, they must be pretty happy in their own minds that um, they'll get, uh, you know, that they'll get past all the... Um, uh, all the um, issues as quickly as possible. So it's been uh, four offers for AB, uh, for SAB Miller. So this is the final offer for them. You did touch on on those leg regulatory approvals, but we did have the National Treasury here in South Africa raising a few concerns. Um, do you think they have any muscle in stopping this deal? Quite frankly, quite frankly, they have no muscle at all. Um, there are no competition issues. Um, uh, I mean, the fact is that SAB, um, if we go back to the days of Mayor Khan when he ran the business, he always called it a, a temporary, a temporary um, sole um, supplier situation. And quite frankly, with the, you know, with, with the exception, obviously, of Heineken, who've got a bit of market share, I mean, they, they are, for all practical purposes, um, a, a virtual monopoly as it is. So, I mean, how do you have a competition issue if um, if you are acquiring if you are acquiring a monopoly a monopoly business? Um, I also understand somebody told me that um, apparently they are worried about the or certain parties are worried about the tax base being eroded. Yes. Um, you know, I, I, I don't believe uh, you know SAB Miller is a non-South African company already, and um, to whatever extent they've been able to. Um, let's say, uh, optimize their tax structures. Um, I guess that's, uh, that was done many, many years ago. And I would also, and I would also go so far as to suggest that 100% of the earnings of South African breweries um, have, ever since the company moved to London, have been transferred to London every year in any event. So mm -hmm. how do you transfer more than 100% of your earnings to London? Um, it's already been transferred to London. So... I don't see I don't see any issues like that of being of being relevant. Um, I know the PIC said that they had extracted um, some sort of indication that um, Ambev would look for uh, would seek um, a secondary listing in Johannesburg. And I'll be quite frank with you, I don't believe that will happen either, mm -hmm. because once once you've got the business, um, and firstly, they, firstly they never made it a condition, and secondly, even if it is a condition. Um, the um, the PRC shareholding is not big enough to block the deal. So, and knowing that InBev are are absolutely paranoid about costs, mm -hmm. I really do not see any need for them to have another cost of a secondary listing in Johannesburg. Given the fact that I guess the London listing will disappear in any event. So, what on earth do you want more than a listing in Belgium and a listing in New York for? I mean, that's always served them well, and why shouldn't it serve them well in the future? Well, we'll have to leave it there. Thank you so much for joining us. That was Sid Vianello, independent analyst.